Time now for Caps Corner, brought to you by our great friends at Great Clips. Our guest today is the pride of Glenbrook North, and he's the new head basketball coach of the Duke Blue Devils. John Shire, I went to see you when I got a tip. you got to go see this kid from Northbrook. He's playing in a men's league in Evanston against men. And you were, I think, in the seventh or eighth grade, and I'm like, this can't be real. And then here you are, the head coach of Duke. What a journey, man. It's been a it's been a fun journey. Excited to be here. I remember those moments like it was yesterday. I remember playing Greg Oden in the City Suburban Shootout, which uh, you sent me a picture not too long ago. And uh, it's fun for me. Chicago is always going to be home. And uh, thinking about those moments gets you to a place where you have an opportunity to become, you know, the next coach at Duke, I guess. Okay, so I'm at a game, and this kind of plays into you, get you getting to Duke. I'm at a game at Proviso West. You score 21 points in 75 seconds, and I think you came a point or two short of setting the school single game record that Chris Collins had at 42. I'm behind them, and I remember Coach K saying to Chris, your record's gone, man. He hits another <laughs> shot, your record's gone. And Collins is cheering against you to break his record. Do you remember that game? <laughs> I do remember it. And the crazy part is I've always grown up admiring the Proviso West Christmas tournament. I used to watch, you know, the new Trier teams play Westinghouse and you see all these big, big time games there. And, uh, you know, that same game, I broke Ronnie Fields record for most points ever in the game, which he had 51. I got 52. Uh -huh. Chris had 54, That's which what it was in Montgomery North. And I got called for an offensive foul in the final 10 seconds of the game. So I, I, I know Chris was celebrating, although he should have been <laughs> disappointed for me and his alma mater at Gilbert North. But I know he was thinking about the record that he uh, got to got to brag about. Still to this day, by the way, he brags about. Yes, he absolutely does. So what is it like now to have Coach K, the winningest coach of all time, your mentor, walk out the door it's your program now, and it's Duke. What is that like to wake up every day? Well, there's a range of emotions, right? There's uh, naturally, there's immediately, there's a responsibility you feel to make sure we have the best staff, uh, the best players and people, uh, and get the organization right to set us up to be successful next year and in the future. And we've made some really good progress so far this offseason already. I think we're on our, on our way there. Uh, to be ready to compete at the highest level uh, next year, but there's a lot. It's exciting. There's, uh, it's you know, emotional because that's your guy, that's your coach, and you've worked together so closely the last ten years. Really, I've been with him thirteen of the last sixteen seasons at Duke. I've been right with him. So, uh, but really excited for this opportunity and excited for the start uh, that we have with our staff being together and and uh, this this group of incoming freshmen and and uh, returning players. How do you juggle recruiting and academics and boosters and the athletic administration and then oh by the way NIL and everything else that goes with it? How do you juggle all that? You know, it's uh, I've been able to learn from the best in that regard in Coach K. You have to manage your time. You know, it's in, I've, I've, Dan used to be the best at it. You know, when you're a player, you're just thinking about playing. And as you, as I've gone into my coaching career, you know, you have to plan your days the night before. You have to make sure you're efficient. Uh, and uh, that's something that I've done. There's, there's more that comes with being a coach nowadays. And for me, it's exciting. It's, it's, you have more control and more opportunity, but obviously you need to attack it the right way. So yesterday, Mike Bray came out and said, because there's been a lot of coaches, high-profile coaches at your level, saying, I hate NIL, I hate the portal. And Mike Bray said, can you guys stop whining, please? We make a lot of money, and these kids deserve their opportunities. And I heard there was a little blowback, and some other coaches have taken his side. Did you hear those comments? What were your thoughts about that? Well, I, I I really feel he's spot on. You know, it's it's there's look, I, I I came through Duke about fifteen years ago, which is pretty recent, and it's night and day from what it's like for our guys now with opportunities they have versus what I had. And it would be really easy to say, Well, I wish it was that way or can we go back to when it was just more simple, whatever whatever it may be. But all in all, if it's done right, this is it's better. And you have to be 
uh, thoughtful and we have to make sure we're still, you know, valuing the right things, but our players and our student athletes deserve the opportunity to make their name off, make money off of name, image, and likeness. They deserve to have their choice where they want to be. And so for us, we look at it as an opportunity. And I'm not going to speak for what other coaches feel or what they're doing, but I can tell you that's how we're approaching it. And uh, we're really excited about this next chapter and new era of college basketball. So you also recruit kids who think, I'm going one year and I'm gone, I'm going to the NBA, which is their right. When I was coaching, man, if we get a point guard to stay four years, he's the, you know, going to grow with us, a John Shire type. He's going to grow with our program. We mentioned Chris Collins, long-term guys, and then you go get the superstar here and there. It's not that way anymore. It's Paola Boncaro to this guy to that guy. Is that harder to coach like that or easier? I'm not going to say it's harder or easier. I'm not sure. You know, coaching me for four years, I'm sure it's fun, but it's it's fun coaching Paulo for a year too. That's that's you want to get the Paulos while while you can, uh, but it makes it. You, you're always trying to figure out how how can you have a stable roster in a, in a stable environment, and uh, that's that's really what it comes down to. And for us, you know, can't talk about our commitments for the following year, but we've really tried to find balance with our roster moving forward in these next two classes with some may be here for a shorter period of time, but we put a lot of emphasis into the development while they're here and returning and retaining the right, the right guys. So uh, I think we're on a course to do that. Is it easy? No, but we have a great opportunity when you're at a school like Duke, you know, there you should getting your degree from Duke is a big deal. And right. uh, we bring in guys that value that. And, uh, you know, are excited about that opportunity. Hey, before I let you go, I watched an interview the other day, some foreign reporters interviewing Paolo Boncaro. And he says, well, Patrick Mahomes, he said, I'm not Patrick Mahomes. He <laughs> thought he was interviewing Patrick Mahomes. I guess yeah. no matter how good you are, everybody yes, gets sir. a little dose of humility, right? <laughs> No, he, he needed a little bit of a, he needed to come back to earth a little bit. You know, he had a great season. He's going to be a top pick in the NBA draft. So I'm happy that happened to him. So, yeah, Paulo Mahomes, that's yeah. what we're going to call him. Yeah, you know. exactly. Hey, man, please tell your parents and your sisters I said hello. Uh, good people, man. I've known you a long time, and I could not be happier for how you've turned out. Dave, thanks for having me on. Great seeing you as always.